Today we're going to be talking about peak formation, high and lows of the day, different types of day structures. Stay tuned traders, we'll be right back. Good day traders, I'm Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. It's Friday, we've had again some very large moves in the market, especially on gold. We're gonna talk about peak formations today, just clarifying some very simple concepts around timings and the highs and lows of the day, stop hunts, and different types of day structures. Now before we get started, I just wanna say thank you to everybody for a ton of great feedback, a lot of emails, again, just kind of overloaded at the moment with emails. But again, thank you for hitting the like button and turning on your notifications so that when I give out my latest video, you get that right away. So thank you. Today we're gonna to be talking about high and low of the day, high and low of the session, and understanding different types of days. We're, I'm gonna include a link below that explains a bit more of the different types of day structures with market profile. It's more about the conceptual understanding and part of that reason is that a lot of traders want something that they can trade the same on every single day, where in, that, in, in the different types of days are why different types of systems will not work on certain types of days. Narrow range days, double distribution days, non-trending days, just different things that will frustrate traders. You know, we talk about the weekly template, day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, these different day structures fit in there and also our 12 candle window allows us some insight into knowing, like for example, last night we saw a massive move down off of the equities hour at the high of the day, but two days earlier we saw the market jamming back and forth in a very you know, narrow range for gold, so roughly 100, 100 pip box. But knowing where you're at in the template and the type of day that you're in can help define your thesis or your narrative as we head into each session, knowing where we're at in terms of our number boxes, the high and the low. And again, we're gonna clarify, I keep getting this question, how do you know you're at the high or the low? Well, my response to that is simply, you are either at the high of the day or the low of the day, or you're inside. If you're not at the high or the low, and you're, you can't see where that is, that means you're inside. There's a high and there's a low. If you're at the high, well, they could keep going higher. But if you have a high in place, now you have a reference point for the market to trade back up to. And again, coming back to our 12 candle window, understanding where you're at in that timing window. So again, that first hour, 45 to 60 minutes, typically, Although it's tradable, we could see a 50, 75, maybe 100 pip move, which is a stop hunt potentially back into a trend. As we saw yesterday on gold, we saw them go vertical. Traders can be in that move. It, it was breaking off the low of London as we headed into the session with three pushes and pins on the bottom. It went vertical. We saw an engulfment in that first candle of the equities hour. Okay, what that merely defined for us was a high of the day. Now we have our reference point, and in that second 15 minutes, the market proceeded to head back up towards the high of the day. So the first hour put a high in place. They came back down. Then they went up again in New York at the equities open before locking it in, and then that third hour shifting all the way back down. So again, we're gonna just kinda go back and understand what a peak formation is. If the market goes up for three, four candles and engulfs, again, we're looking for a peak formation. Now again, depending on how that presents in our price action, so again, they went up, put an engulfment pattern in that first hour, or in the beginning of the second hour, but it was a vertical market, so that's now a reference point for our high. We had a high put in place, they came back down, then we went up a second time, a little bar before locking it in and shifting away. 
The difference the previous session was they went up on Wednesday, one, two, three, and then pinned on the open of the equities hour, which was a stop hunt into the Asian peak formation. So again, the stop hunt was into a peak formation versus last night where they went vertical back outside of the, the Asian high into the previous day's vertical move down. So we're going to look at that and compare the different, different scenarios to each one of those days. But I'm just going to talk briefly about the different types of days. And again, you can read more in the link below. Normal day is about 5% of the time where the market stays within a nice tight consolidation and it doesn't extend out of that first hour of trade or first that 12 candle window. It stays inside of there without extending out. A normal variation day is a day where they will often move out of that range right from the beginning of the day and for a large part of the day extend that range out. So we could see Asia as a consolidation and then a move out and then London go higher and put a peak formation in for the high of the day or, or for that session and then the US come back, take out that high and then come back down later to the low of the day. So again, that would be a normal variation day. A neutral day, which is typically where the market may extend out to one side, outside of that 12 candle window, pushing the high, pushing the low, whatever that may be, and work its way down to the other side, but stay relatively around that initial 12 candle window. So we see that sometimes on the major pairs and on a, on a quieter day until perhaps later in the day as that range starts to sort of expand a bit more and then we'll see a move. A non-trending day is typical for a narrow range day which is similar to what we saw I believe it was on Tuesday, Tuesday on gold. They went up and they were working the high. We had the big move up on Monday and then the narrow range bar on Tuesday. Big move down Wednesday, yesterday Narrow, uh, not a narrow range day, but a tighter range day. Today could be a very large move heading into the weekend. Trend days, as we know, which is partly why a lot of the trend following indicators, trend following doesn't work all the time. We get a day that does trend. Traders, you know, trend traders can do very well on those days, but typically we see the market go back and forth taking out one side or the other throughout the session, throughout the 24-hour market, which makes it difficult for trend traders to hold on to those positions without getting stopped out of break even or taking a loss unless they're taking profits off the table. The double distribution day is the all-in day where we see a market move very strongly right from the beginning of the day in one direction or from, a, from the beginning of a session. So we'll often see that come off the low of the week or the high of the week. And that market moves and it's an all-in day. I've talked about this before. Do not counter trend those days. They'll consolidate with some degree of a stop hunt into the session open, usually in that equities hour with a one, two, three against the trend before continuing for a measured move. So we'll get a double distribution of that range, whether it's up or down. And you do not want to counter trend on these days because they do not come back. These are the sort of days that traders can get their accounts blown out on because they're trying to counter trend that all day long. Meanwhile, they're getting smashed because they're going in the wrong direction and the trend, you could, you could get in anywhere virtually and make money just by being in that continuous movement in one direction. So, peak formation will typically form within that hour into the beginning of the equities hour. Now in the rare occasion, if it's a narrow range day and nothing happens in that first hour, we can expect to see the market go vertical or break out in that equities hour. We saw that a few weeks ago on gold. It was a Friday, it was a narrow range day. Uh, they had a, a stop hunt to the low, 50 pip stop hunt at the London Open. They pulled it back and stayed in consolidation into that first hour, they stayed there, and then in the second hour, the equities hour, they broke out and made a very strong 150 pip, 100, 150 pip move straight up before in the third hour locking in that high and coming right back down, and that was the peak formation that started our move down uh, into the Monday, I believe, two weeks ago before we started coming back up. So again, we'll look at some examples of this on the charts. Peak formations. 
will typically form in that first hour to, to 90 minutes. So again, if the market's going up, we want to start looking at how many levels is it rising? 25 pip increments, 50, so for the pound, some of the pound crosses, most of the major pairs, they'll typically move 25 to 50 pips. For gold, or in a very strong move out of the range, you can probably expect 70, 25, 25, and 25 from where the move begins. But in gold, obviously, we can move in 50 pip increments. And as we saw the other night, uh, when that rolled over, it was moving in 100 pip increments. Now that was a little bit different. When the peak formation is put in, we can expect 45 to 60 minutes minimum. And then that middle hour to either lock in the high or the low for the reversal. Now that's different than a trend day. We're talking about a market that breaks back to the high or through the high or through the low to hit stops in that first hour. So let's look at some examples again. Thanks for a ton of great feedback. We're gonna just review one last thing, the timing window. So again, this first hour, 8 to 11 p.m. would be Asia, 2 to 5 a.m. for Europe and London, 8 to 11 a.m. for New York. And that's New York Eastern Standard Time. Very important. Good day, traders. Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Continuing our discussion on peak formations and different types of days, I'm going to include the link that you can go and do a bit more research just in terms of understanding the types of day setups or day uh, types of days in, in occurrence for the market profile, which applies to our work in terms of the high and the low of the day. Now, just going back and looking at the charts randomly, again, coming back with each day having a thesis, um, we're going to talk about a couple of things in terms of knowing potentially when we may have a large session or a, a, a bigger session building up throughout the day. But each day we come back with our basic question who's in the money we talk about looking for profitable trades knowing where the market may be headed and then but also looking at our 12 candle window to see where the market heads if it puts in a peak formation or a stop hunt and where we're able to position ourselves when a move has been locked in and potentially where that move may end as well so again just looking randomly we always have the previous days highs and lows we look at the session highs and lows we look at who's in the money, and then we watch how price behaves. We're also looking at where's our 50 pip box. So traders often ask me, where do I start? There's a lot of little parameters, but basically the every video I try to re review the simple concepts working from the high and the low, and then asking yourself some of these basic questions to know, number one, are they working the low of the day? Are they working the high of the day? Where is the money? What time is it? What has the market done? And is that in line with my thesis for my trade entry? So essentially we talk about engulfments and pin hammers. They lock in the high and the low of the day. Now again, I'm, I'm just going to say that if you don't know what that is, then print your charts off and circle the high and the low of each day. Look at how that occurred. Look what time it happened. Look how that evolved. How did it take place? Look at where you're at in the weekly structure. Because again, every single day will be different. So when traders say, well, you know, they want to see it today, tomorrow's going to be entirely different. Does that mean you're going to need to see it tomorrow too? You need to study it. And then you need to stand back and observe and study where the highs and lows are. Like people ask me, where? how do you know you're at the high or the low? Well, as the day's trading, you are either up here at the high in some capacity, whether it's over here, or you're at the low in some capacity, whether it's over here. And we talk about structure, we talk about geometry, we talk about engulfments and pin hammers. So when we talk about peak formations and we talk about the 12 candle window, we watch how price behaves in that first 45 minutes to an hour. Typically we're looking for a move to the higher to the low that ends up being locked in. Now, if we see a day that doesn't pair out the way we expect, for example, we don't see it go to yesterday's high. Again, we look at the different types of days. If you read through, you'll see where they talk about 
uh, the normal day where the market doesn't attract other time frame traders. So until later. So again, we're in an initial balance that stays in a very tight 50 pip range until later when they extend the low out and before pulling it back in our initial balance then in that three hour window is just outside of the double zeros and 50 before they extend it out slightly again searching for more business before pulling it back and locking in the low which means as we head into our next window and they break out of our geometry our bias is already in place for heading to the other side so the market comes back down one two three prior to entering into our 12 candle window but in line with our locked in low of the day with a double bull pin hammer with a bear pin hammer for tweezers for a move back to the high of the day the market stop hunts to the high of the day so again we're looking for a peak formation in that first hour the market engulfs first candle of our second hour and again this is the same scenario that happened last night on gold we except the market had gone vertical in that first hour then the first candle of the equities hour engulfs and traders short that but again for the day itself all that is now is a high of the day so we've talked about this before a pin by itself a pin hammer by itself unless it's a blow off market that that has a three bar formation which we'll review in a minute this again the timing window is critical because the next bar automatically engulfs these traders so again we have shorts trapped we have stops hit the previous days high is hit attracting other time frame traders for the explosive move outside of that initial balance range and again if you note, know, we'll we're in a 50 pip box that market moved up in 50 pip increments before finally blowing off one two three outside of our 12 candle window and this is a great example of a three bar reversal but what's really important about the three bar reversal is that it occurred at double zeros and extended slightly up into the quarter range you'll notice that this market is just above 50 at the high of the day after a trade off of the low of the day so there's a distinct difference and we are vertical on the last leg and we have a three bar reversal where the market goes one two three inside bar so we get one two three engulfment but it's the first bar of the equities hour that's the trap taking traders into the wrong direction before hitting it again now that market could have went one two and three reversal below the double zeros or the previous day's high for a move back down and we would have had a middle structure in this case the market extended up in three pushes blowing off in a one two three with the inside bar so again peak formation peak formation low so again we talk about sometimes it'll be that it'll mostly be that first hour but there are different variations of days they put the peak formation low in before heading to the end of the 12 candle window London Europe they put a peak formation high in which means that we could see a one two three heading into the US session although this market was a second push down it was still a 50 pip trade back into traders who were long again where is the money who's long so peak formations do not counter trend the peak formation until we have a peak formation taking out that move one push two push three pushes which is how most moves will end is on a three push pattern whether it's a 33 or merely three pushes ending on a W or an M formation so again peak formations we see that first hour again extend the low out in the Asian session first bar is a false move long before the one two three and the engulfment back in the other direction so again I'm gonna emphasize 45 minutes to one hour now the difference in this scenario where the market breaks out and pulls back in that first candle of the equities hour is that the market pinned down pulled back then broke out and reversed so we have our peak formation stop hunt down the market goes sideways before continuing the move back up towards the high of the day very important distinct difference so again peak formation down 
one, two, three down, reversal, our bias is long. The market breaks through the previous day's high. We get three pushes down. We've showed this example before, before the market continues with our extended W formation on the third push, middle structure, moving back up towards the beginning of the year, London 12 candle window. So again, the question we say to ourselves is that, well, okay, so far in the day, Asia has formed our low of the day peak formation. The market puts a high of the day in place in our three hour 12 candle window with a creeping trend back down towards the breakout level of the previous day's high before exploding back up. So again, if Asia's put the high or the low of the day in place, peak formation low, and London breaks higher, we can ascertain at this stage that it is possible we could get a peak formation in the London session. We get one, two, three, four, we get a bear candle, first candle of the equities hour. The second candle drops down below the high bull. The market then proceeds to come back one, two, three. We talked about this. This is the second leg of the M. One, two, three, small bull candle inside of that peak formation for the move back down into traders who are long at the beginning of the session. So a couple things. One is that traders, if you shorted the bull candle, Again, when they've pulled the pin off, if you didn't have a pro take profit order in place, this is an example of where the market may go to a, a level, hit breakout orders and pull back. So you're holding on for 50 pips. They pull it back and hit it a second time. I would be looking to take money off the table if I hadn't taken it already. You definitely want to be at break even. But again, looking now and saying to yourself, that's one push, two pushes and a third push down, it either needs to break through this level, but you're trading into a peak formation low again. So again, this is an example of stop hunting into a peak formation. The market works its way back up. So now we're saying to ourselves, well, it's possible the US session could put the peak formation high in place. The market drops down at the beginning of the 12 candle window. Again, trading up to the peak formation and giving us another peak formation before coming back in the equities hour. One, two, pin bar to the high, pin bull candle. Again, traders can trade manually, trade the break of this candle. The pin to the high is the stop hunt on the third push into the peak formation. So the stop hunt in that first hour, that 45 to 60 minutes took traders down into the move so dragging them further down before the equities hour takes that market back up 75 pips, pinning to the high, giving us our entry at the break of this candle with a one bar stop at double zeros. So again, the significance of knowing your 50 and 100 pip boxes, especially with gold. And then the move back down to the low of that move up at the beginning of the Europe London 12 candle window before pulling back hitting it a third time and again giving us our peak formation low. Low low bear, we talked about this the other day, high bull. But recognizing these reversals, these are three bar reversals that lock in a peak formation. Again, we're outside of the 12 candle window. They've extended that three hour high low with three pushes before pulling it back inside, breaks back inside before heading into consolidation. First hour is my main focus, looking for 45 minutes to, to one hour for a low or a high to possibly be put in place. The market does that. It gives us a low of the day before hitting it a second time in that equities hour and engulfing. The market engulfs. Again, the equities hour taking traders in the wrong direction, trapping them, giving us a little W structure just below the double zeros for a 50 pip move through to the previous day's high. Now again, that's a 50 pip range. You may not get 50 pips in terms of tradable, but that market moved through to the previous day's high just underneath the 50 pip box. So again, once that market's moved, you may be taking profits off. You may be moving to break even, locking it in, whatever that may be. Once it's pinned up to that number and pulls back inside, I'd be looking for that market to possibly now pull back inside into consolidation. Again, we're looking at a fast move, creeping trend down, fast move, taking money off the table. 
previous day's high may have been the profit target in that situation. We head into the next session. Again, this is an example of a day that stays inside of the initial balance. So this is potentially a narrow range day. This was a payrolls day. You can expect to see days like this, but this is a great example of not wanting to get caught inside. You can see how they jam traders in all day long. They stay inside of the initial peak formations that were put in place. Traders get caught chasing these moves when they're inside of the high and low until payrolls spikes both sides, then proceeds to work its way back up towards the high of the day, pinning to the high, at the beginning of the equities hour, inside bar, double inside bar, at the quarter level, at the high of the day. So again, you don't have to be at the high of the day, right at the high, because the market's not giving you a chance to get back up there, but they're working the high of the day, double inside bar, beneath the previous day's high for the sell of the break of the inside bar for a minimum test back down to the low of the payrolls spike. Again, focusing on that first hour, this was a was a blow off pin in payrolls, and then they pinned the high. No stop hunt in that Europe London 12 candle window that broke either boundary. Once this pin bar has printed, then we go back to work, and we ask ourselves, are they working up into the high or to the low of the day? So. Next day, again, the market gives us a high low boundary beginning of our Asian session, that first hour stays inside of the range of our high low. We have a high and low put in place. The market stays inside of that high and low. No break in that first or second hour outside of the Asian range, which was established just as the market opened. But as we head into the gap time, the market breaks 25 pips higher, one, two, three, before engulfing. And we've talked about this earlier in the week. We have a peak formation now in place. We have a high of the day that they retest but do not take out. So again, talking about that is a high of the day. It's our reference now, but the market stays underneath and works into the high. It doesn't pull back and break through it again. It stays underneath, consolidates, and pins upwards before 1-2 in our beginning of our 12 candle window. So again, the market was working one side of our initial balance, our initial profile. We're inside of a double zero box. 50 was the median price. They tried to extend that up into the upper quarter box, pinning in and giving us our middle structure at the top of a 100 pip box before giving us a bear pin hammer. So again, 100 pip box on gold, the US session and the previous day's low is just down beneath the, the double zero box. Working the high peak formation put in place, consolidation, pinning into that peak formation. One, two, three, fourth candle. Our first hour has made a peak formation stop hunt into the high of the day and then given us a bear pin hammer. We are now targeting a minimum of the low of the day where the initial peak formation was put in place for the day at the beginning of our rollover. So we have our Asian session low as well as the peak formation low put in place in the rollover gap time. They blow through that, they pin, and they pull back, establishing now a low of the day. So again, we watch how does price behave. They come back into the low, but they don't follow through right away. So again, if they engulf this and it was a false break, they'd come right back down and, and get the traders who are long on the pin right off the bat. But they don't do that. They go up one push, two pushes. They come back inside with a second push into the peak formation, into the previous day's low. They pull it back again. Second push, third push, middle structure, engulfment, pin. We talked about this two bar combination being a bull pin bar, but now we have our peak formation low in place. It has stayed intact and they have worked back into the low. We also have structure now that we can measure as a minimum target for a measured move. So again, they talk about this with the reference to the types of days, the geometry. We have our minimum target being somewhere at 150 pips. But if we look at our full expansion of the high-low 
for that day, we have a minimum expansion that can take this well over 200 pips. So again, trying to squeeze more out of winning trades if they are moving strongly. Peak formation low in place, peak formation high. It blows through the high of the day. Now we're uh, looking for the U.S. session at some point to put a peak formation high in place. So again, traders are looking to short this. This is the, the it, situation. We get a one, two, three finally before they consolidate and eventually close below the high bull pin, drop at 50 pips before pulling back and heading into consolidation. So again, not getting in front of a moving freight train until price confirms our 12 candle window, nothing. So we're expecting it to happen in that hour outside of the 12 candle window. It consolidates before finally engulfing the high bull, locking in the high of the day. Again, that first hour in that U.S. session, we already had our peak formation in place. So we can expect a stop hunt in to the peak formation low. Traders, first mouse, they come back one more time before shifting away. So the low of the day was locked in and they were working back into the peak formation. That first hour pins it one more time. They give us our bullpen hammer second candle for the strong move back up. Next day, we have a bear pin hammer inside bar and a, another bear pin hammer in the long direction. One, two, three, engulfment. Our peak formation in Asia is down. That first hour gives us a peak formation low before moving back towards the previous day's high, taking out yesterday's high, and then locking in a high of the day. So now we have our reference point. The market comes back to retest or break through again. It fails before locking in that high of the day and closing below the double zeros. The market comes down, pulls back, drops over again, again protecting that peak formation high. So if we're heading into the next session, I talked about this the other day, peak formation low, peak formation high. Are they working the high of the day or the low of the day? As we head into the end of the Asian 12 candle window, the market comes back and drops down one more time on our third push. Breakout pullback. Some traders shorted the high of the bull candle in line with another even lower peak formation before dropping down. So our first hour into the equities hour open, the London open, extends the move back down, taking out the low of the day. Okay. They stop on the peak formation low before pulling back and then working their way back down into the low of the day. So again, are they working the high of the day or the low of the day? Did they break out of the range? They're working down into the peak formation low. They take it out. They pull it back. We have a new peak formation low in place. Again, they're working the low of the day, but they haven't extended outside of our range. They move it up 50 pips before hitting it one more time as we head into our 12 candle window. So again, that first hour, First bar takes traders into the peak formation before reversing. Traders can be long at 50. We have a high of the day that's just underneath the quarter level outside of the double zero box, so possibly targeting the 50 pip box above. And we see that market breakout pullback, hitting stops, and then continue the move up one, two, three. In line with our peak formation low, that reversal gives us a peak formation inside of the peak formation. So again, working the low before going back to our high of the day and taking it out. They pin up into that before one, two, three, engulfment, and then the pin, 50 pip pin stop hunt down into traders who were long. Now we have our peak formation possibly locked in. This is our equities hour reversing at the end of the middle hour. So our high and low of the day are potentially done now and in place. Traders are trading inside here for the rest of the session. So again, traders, just keeping it simple, identifying that first hour. Are they putting a peak formation in place? Peak formation, peak formation. We talked about this. The market rolled underneath the peak formations, worked sideways, pinned up into the box. So again, a possible trending day. Consolidation in the middle of the move. One, two, three, down into the peak formation. We talked about a squeeze building up. At the low of the day, we had a peak formation low, one push, two pushes, three pushes, second candle equities hour, 50 pip stop hunt to the high of the session, back into traders who were short. Again, where is the money? Say we had a peak formation 
down low, which again, traders, two scenarios. We have a peak formation down low, which when you're down low and they're working into the low, just fix this, you want to be suspicious that and the third push, we have lower highs. This is ripe. We get the inside bar, the bullpen squeeze, three pushes for an explosive move up, trapping lower level shorts who get creamed on three bars, getting their stops hit either for a loss, break even, or, uh, you know, just getting or holding on and averaging into a losing trade before pulling back, dropping down 50 pips, and now we have a possible peak formation in place for the session at the end of our London hour into the third hour. So again, we have a peak formation low, peak formation high. In the gap time, they take out the peak formation low. So again, our thesis now is that our low of the day potentially is being worked. They've locked in the high, our first hour. Okay, and we're going to talk about the, the difference here. One, two, three, fourth candle. Bear pin, double inside bar, bear pin into the peak formation. The stop hunt is into the peak formation. Okay, so they've taken out the low of the day, giving us a new peak formation low. The stop hunt in the first hour goes up into the peak formation high. The market breaks lower. So again, traders asked why, why is this okay to take as a short? So we've broken through the previous day's low. The stop hunt was back up into the peak formation without taking it out in the first hour, 45 to 60 minutes to break that range. It did not do that. Breakout traders are in for the short and the retest of the peak formation low. The market trades inside. So the first pin has traders guessing. The next one breaks into the peak formation low. The third one takes it out, confirming that this peak formation low is no longer valid before breaking down and extending the range. But of course, we, we already had a market rolling over after our narrow range day at the high of the week for the measured move down. But we're going to look at last night's the difference. So again, looking the market stopped in that first hour, the stop hunt was into the peak formation. This is the high of the US session. Peak formation, 45 to 60 minutes. Last night, they went up 45 minutes, and then the first bar of the equities hour, they engulf it. So again, the difference is that this market went vertical and was a breakout of the high of the day. This is a breakout at this point. They reverse and engulf. Some traders shorted this. The next bar is an inside bar. So again, the difference, looking at the difference, the next bar broke out right away and pinned down into the peak formation. There is no peak formation that we're stop hunting into. This is now potentially a peak formation. The market comes right back in the equities hour to retest that, and we get our extended M formation, the little bar at the high of the day, our last candle of the equities hour. So again, the example of where when the market's open in New York, they take them back into the extreme, getting traders chasing this move. They think this is a trend. It's a strong move. This was tradable off the open. The market put a peak formation and they pinned down into it. They pinned down into it a, a second time. A third push, one push, two pushes, three pushes down before the explosive stop hunt through in a double zero box. That little bar at the end of the equities hour, stop hunting that first peak. Now we've got our one bar stop. The market breaks down and confirms on the second candle, follows through strongly all the way back down to where that move started taking out both pins from the beginning of the session, but a very distinct difference in the peak formations that formed. Peak formation came down in London and reversed, a three bar reversal, so again, study this pattern. The market came down on a blow off inside bar, bullpen hammer off of double zeros, and respected and, and stayed above that three bar reversal, as opposed to Again, a peak formation, double inside bar, pinning up and then pulling back at round numbers at the top of a 100 pip box. That's a 50 pip bar. That's a, a pin with a 50 pip bar. This bar is a breakout engulfment for a retest of the high in the equities hour. Very distinct difference. So hopefully you got some value from today's video traders. Study the peak formations that first hour to 60 minutes. And again, just reviewing yesterday, we had a peak formation low in Asia. That first hour, 
stayed inside. The stop pump was back up into the three pushes before they locked in on the third push, the engulfment. The one, two, three was pinning up into the peak formation that was already in place from the Asian session before rolling over and breaking out of the range, which was a stop hunt on the three-bar peak formation reversal. So again, you'll see the same three-bar pattern that formed the peak formation low the night before. Just zoom in on this a bit. Inside bar, then the bullpin hammer off the double zeros. Blow-off candle. Bullpin hammer. Three-bar reversal inside bar. Off the double zeros. Pulling the market back inside before retesting the high of the day on the breakout. And again, engulfment. We get one push, two pushes, three pushes to the high. End of the equities hour, uh, which is a stop hunt to gain into traders who were short from the previous night's U.S. session. Again, simple stuff. Peak formations. Let the market show you what it's doing. And then in that second hour, again, looking for that engulfment pin hammer at the high or the low of the day. Keep it simple, traders. End the week on a strong note. Keep things simple. Work from the outside. Stay disciplined. Stay focused. Keep getting better. And may the market. Hi, go traders. With you. It's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at StacyBurkeTrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis, and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7-Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets, and this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence, and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined, and may the markets go with you.